so surprisingly, uh, we haven't, none of us have brought up the COVID pandemic yet. Um, that's had a huge effect on immigration. I was just looking through your stories uh, since March. All of the immigration stories have, have uh, been impacted by COVID in some way. Uh, so I know we only have a limited amount of time, but there's a lot to get into there. There's the family separation, there's uh, coronavirus patients being sent back to Guatemala, mm -hmm. um, how it's affected remaining in Mexico. So I guess my question is, how have you really seen COVID affect, we'll say on Remain in Mexico for the matter of time. So how have you seen COVID affect uh, the Remain in Mexico policy as, as you've been reporting on it? There's a few significant ways. Um, Remain in Mexico has continued. Um, and, but um, hearings, so basically people who are in Remain in Mexico are given an, a notice to appear. And they usually go through sort of three or four rounds of hearings that are several months apart. So you have people who have been at, at waiting in Mexico, remaining in Mexico, um, just to sort of get their asylum claims even heard by a, a judge um, more than a year. Um, and that was already happening, um, that, that sort of really lengthy delay. And they have to come back to the border every time for, you know, for that hearing. They're brought across for the hearing and then they're brought back and sort of just dumped, dumped back into Mexico. Um, so it was already taking quite a long time. And part of the administration's argument for this policy was this is a way that we can adjudicate asylum claims really quickly. We'll do it in, in just a, a very short period of time. Um, and that was the part of the foundation of why this policy was allowed to go forward, which clearly isn't true because you have people waiting. So now with coronavirus, um, both types of, of immigration court cases, which is the detained docket and the non-detained docket, meaning people who are in immigration detention and who are not in immigration detention, um, both types have had been impacted by coronavirus because a lot of the immigration courts were essentially shut down. I mean, basically the immigration justice system which you, I wouldn't even really refer to that, but it's under the, refer to it that way, but it's under the Department of Justice, basically ground to a halt with coronavirus. And, and there are reasons for that. You can see clearly, I mean, there were courtrooms where there were documented cases of coronavirus, immigration judges, uh, attorneys. It was a really rare circumstance in which ICE attorneys and, um, and immigration attorneys uh, came together to say, please close the courts. Um, because you're putting everyone in danger and the public, whoever they come into contact with. Um, so for people under Remain in Mexico, what it's essentially meant is there was already, they were already waiting so long. Um, and this is sort of trying to follow the process the right way, uh, the quote unquote right way, um, trying to go through the process uh, legally and, and, and see the whole process through. Um, there was for being forced to wait even longer. And now they're being forced to wait even longer in refugee camps essentially, or the ones who are lucky enough to sort of be in an apartment or a hotel uh, where the conditions are also really bad. Um, the conditions are ripe for coronavirus. So they're being forced to wait even longer in a situation in which they're incredibly vulnerable to getting coronavirus. And we already, there are already documented cases in which um, people removed by the United States under this new expulsions policy, which basically as a short version, they're citing a controversial CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention order to say that essentially that e asylum is paused, protections for unaccompanied minors are paused, everything is paused, we're just gonna turn people back really quickly because of this incredible risk of migrants bring, bringing in coronavirus, um, of which there's almost no, they, they've cited two cases so far, I believe. Mm. Um, and the United States being, you know, the epicenter of the world for coronavirus and for a long time, you know, had many more cases than Mexico or Central America. There have already been cases in which they've shown that people removed from the United States, either right over the border in those northern border cities, have coronavirus. So they're actually bringing it to these camps that people are essentially stuck in because of U.S. policy. Um, and then also, of course, we have these examples in which the U.S. is removing people all the way back to either southern Mexico or Central America, in which, the, for example, Guatemala alone, the majority of Guatemala's coronavirus cases can be directly attributed to deportees from the United States. Um, so this, this is, these are the ways in which um, coronavirus is, is impacting immigration. And, and in the name of coronavirus, citing coronavirus, even when the health the public health justification is really nebulous. 
the Trump administration is taking really dramatic steps that they've been very explicit that they've wanted to take throughout the entirety of the administration. They're doing it now, um, either citing public health and coronavirus or sort of under the cover of coronavirus while people are sort of looking the other way. Yeah, I've had conversations about AI and surveillance and other technologies, how these policies that are being enacted now will just continue after the pandemic, whether or not there's the same threat. And I imagine that's the same case for immigration, especially if the Trump administration continues for four more years. And it's really clear. I mean, if you think about it, it's really clear. I mean, they're they're saying that they want the company, the company, they, that they want the country to reopen. Um, but they're saying, oh, but these immigration policies have to stay in place indefinitely, um, which is, a, you know, it's just so explicit um, about what they're trying to do. Uh, if you think it's safe enough for the country to reopen, and there are very few documented cases of, of migrants bringing in coronavirus to the United States, especially because the border is essentially closed. I mean, immigration has ground to a halt. Um, what, then why did those policies need to continue to be in place? Um, uh, you know. So it, it's pretty clear. Mm -hmm.